Okay, hi pals, I'm Casey. Uh, let's talk about some books. Uh, if you're new here, I do this every month. Uh, you've probably seen the title of the video. Uh, I took this idea from TikTok from Nia. She will be linked down below. She's incredible. You should absolutely be following her. Um, but basically, I want to go through and talk about all the books that I have physical copies of that I read in January and whether or not I'd read them or I'd buy them again because I am on a mission to shame myself into better buying habits. Um, but one of the things I want to talk about first, and I want to start doing this every month, is I get a lot of my books through the library, and so I want to talk about the cost value of uh, what, like, the cost value, the value uh, in, like, real American dollars uh, for the books I read through the library versus what I have physically. I think that's going to be really interesting. It's at least interesting for me to keep track of and to tally. And so let's do that real fast. You can see my little notebook here. I'm just gonna give you a quick flash. And uh, so I kept track of everything. I've already started for February. Uh, I really quickly want to give a explanation for some of this. So if I got a book through the library, if I got an audiobook through the library, I calculated the cost based off of what it is on uh, Audible. I almost said Kindle, but Audible uh, at full price. Um, it's You could probably do this a little differently depending on if you typically pay, like if you go through Libro FM or Scribd or something like that. But uh, we have an Audible subscription because Amazon makes itself indispensable. And Honestly, that's where we pick up a lot of books if my spouse and I both are going to read them. And so I just thought that that made sense. Um, as far as if I read something, I got uh, an ebook through the library, I calculated this as what it would be for a paperback version from Barnes and Noble, because I just thought that, that was the most easiest baseline way to do it. Amazon drastically undercuts their pricing. So I did not think it was fair to do uh, Amazon, but Barnes and Noble sticks more to the MSRP. And so that's what I went with. In here is also the, I'm going to include every month the books that I have started, but that I have not yet finished, even though they'll be included in like February wrap ups. I, I, because I started them this month, I tallied them for this month. So there are two books in here that I have started, but I have not finished. Is that correct? Is it two or is it three? It's two. And also included in here are any DNFs that I have, but maybe I didn't mention in my wrap up. I didn't talk about any DNFs this month, but I did have one. Um, so let's go go ahead and talk about the totals. Um, my total number of library books totaled out to $200.81 if I had bought everything through Audible or through Barnes & Noble. That is insane to me. I mostly read books from the library this month. You can see, I'm not going to show you a close up, but this is my library column. And that, <laughs> that far surpassed, not far surpassed, it by three surpassed what I read that I already physically had. So it was 14 total books from the library. Now I will say there is one uh, quick addendum here this month, and that is the Chainsaw Man uh, mangas, which you'll see here. Um, the biggest reason I include them there versus like things that I physically have is because these are loaned out to me, these physical copies. And I read them through the ebook because I could not hold the manga while I read it. So that is why those are included there. But I have copies here. These are loaned out to me from my wonderful cousin-in-law, John Carlo. And I'm so excited to read this whole series with you this year. But that's the library tally. So if we do what I physically have, which is right here, minus these Chainsaw Man ones, uh, the total totaled out to $178.89. Now, if you exclude Christmas books that I got, that actually drops the total down to $118.95. And uh, that's the total I'm going to go with because that is what I paid real money dollars for versus what I did not pay actual money for. And that's almost a $100 difference. And uh, if I had... <laughs> It'd be 318, it'd be $320 if I did that together and I bought everything I read for the library. And libraries are amazing. Everyone go to your local library. They're fucking incredible. I want to do more library content. I love my library. I love the app Libby. Just use it. It's fucking amazing. Okay, now let's go talk about some books because I think that's what people are interested in. I don't have this pile in any particular order. I've just filmed my January wrap up. So I threw some books together for a thumbnail. So the first one I'm going to talk about 
about is the trees grew because I bled here. Would I purchase this again? I'm a little iffy on it. I think yes, because I, the stories in here that hit, hit really hard. But there were also ones in here that I absolutely hated. So I'm a little bit hit and miss on whether or not I'd buy it again, especially because I paid full price for this. I think this is ultimately going to be one of those that... I'm gonna go ahead and say no, I wouldn't purchase this again. Not at full price. I would buy it having read it used. I absolutely would put my hands on it and put it in my collection used, but I don't think I'd pay full price for this again. Quickly, let's include these, the Chainsaw Man ones. Uh, these I have not purchased, but would I purchase them for myself? Uh, tentatively, I'm going to say no on this. I enjoyed all of these. I think the series is, at least in the first five, is progressing extremely well, and I think that every book or every uh, volume is getting better than the previous one, but ultimately this is a, I think, a 16 volume manga, and I think that the first five is not enough to know whether or not I would want all of them, because if I was going to buy five, I would want all of them, and these were ten, these are ten dollars each at Barnes and Noble, so that would be about one hundred and sixty dollars before tax to have the entire collection. And I don't know if I'm gonna like the whole thing first, but this is a very tentative. No, I wouldn't buy this. Wild Seed by Octavia E. Butler. Uh, yes, I would hands down buy this again. I absolutely love Octavia Butler's writing, and I'm excited to continue in this series. But also, I just love this version of the book. I think it's really compelling with the. Um, the blue and the yellow and everything. And this is when I realized I didn't put a best cover in for my, uh, my fucking wrap up, but that's okay. That's okay. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I'm actually not too bothered by it. Okay. But anyways, yes, I would absolutely buy this again. I paid full price for it and I would pay full price for this again. I thought it was really good. The Lathe of Heaven by Ursula K. Le Guin. Uh, yes, I would buy this again. Another one I paid full price for. Um, but this is one I have bought much more recently. I believe I bought this at the end of December or the beginning of January. And I would buy this again, particularly because I did actually put a lot of thought into buying this. And I really made a point to read it quickly after I bought it. And I had a very good time with this. And and I, yeah, that's just it. That's it here. That's all we're doing. We're saying yes or no on it. Why am I complicating this? Cradle Land of Parasites. Uh, this was a Christmas gift and I would absolutely buy this myself and I would absolutely have someone buy this for me for Christmas again. This is really good. I really enjoy Sarah Tantlinger's writing. Um, this is my first poetry collection from her and I just, I thought it was a good time. I had a great time and yeah, I would. I would. I'm excited to have it on my shelves and I'm excited that it's in my house. Next, The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells. Uh, I would 100% buy this again. I bought this off book outlet so I got it at a steeply discounted price. Um, I had a great time with it and I'm excited it's on my shelves. So yes, I would buy this again. Next, Rouge by Mona Awad. And I want to say I have complicated feelings about this one, but I in fact do not. And uh, I think it's kind of shocking how I feel. And I don't, I wouldn't buy this again. I would not buy this again. I bought this full price uh, the week it came out, I think. Well, okay, this is complicated. So technically this is a Christmas gift, but like my spouse's parents don't watch this anyways. Um, I bought this for myself <laughs> and then uh, my spouse and their parents were walking around downtown and I caught my spouse and I went, go give this to your parents and tell them that it's a Christmas gift for me. And so, yes, uh, but would I, would I pay full price for this again or have someone Venmo me back money for this again? No, no, I'd buy it used. I definitely love having all of Mona Awad's work uh, except for the one, her first one, The 13 Ways of Looking at Fat Girl. I just haven't read that one yet. But this one, no, I would not buy this again full price. I would buy it used though, but it's purely, it's not because I love this book, but it's just because I want to have the full collection of her work. The Restless Dark by Eric Waters. Uh, no, I would not buy this again. This is a Christmas book, in fact, and no, I wouldn't even have someone else buy this for me again. I did not have a good time with this. This is immediately going into uh, an unhaul pile, which may or may not have already come out by now. I filmed it two weeks ago. I just don't think it's like been scheduled out yet. But yeah, I had a, had a bad Bad time with this. I didn't really enjoy it. And so I know I would not buy this again or have someone else buy it for me. The Ballad of Perilous Graves by Alex Jennings. Uh, I would 100% buy again and I would 100% buy again at full price. This is, even though I only gave this three stars, I think it's an incredible debut. And that's the part that I'm the most excited about. So I'm excited to see more from this author and read more from this author because I think that even though this didn't like 100%, this wasn't 100% my favorite book or like the book that worked the best for me. I think it's incredible and I think it's so good and I just, I want to see more from this author and so I'm very happy to have this in my collection. Next, 
Friday Black. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, by Nana Kwame Adeje Brenya. Uh, yes, I would 100% buy this again. I would 100% buy this again at full price. This is so good. And also, like, if I'd said favorite covers in my wrap up, uh, this would have been it. This is so good. Like, with the lion and the colors and just the font. Like, it's just so good. It's so good. But not only is the cover incredible, the insides are incredible too. I loved. I, I really enjoyed every story in here. I don't think a single story missed for me. Some of them aren't, like, there's some that are not my favorites of all time, but I think everything in here was really, really good, and so I'm very excited to have it in my collection, and I would 100% buy this again. And then the last one I have here is Tech to Me, an anthology of Arctic horror, and yes, this absolutely, I would 100% buy this again, but that's because I like anthologies. Um, this also has two of the scariest short stories I've ever fucking read right at the beginning, and I absolutely love them. I thought they were so, so good. And so I love having a physical copy that I can just go back and reference whenever I just want to give myself a little spooky. Okay, so that's my money wasters for the month of January. Uh, please feel free to leave me a comment down below with a book that you regret buying or a book that you're so happy that you bought or a book you're so happy you got through the library because libraries are fucking amazing. Uh, I will see you next Friday and I hope you're having a great day. Okay, bye.